welcome to another week of NHL Chat Room live right now on Sportsnet's Facebook and YouTube page. We have a new face on the show today. Well, oh, Steve oh, takes we do. Off. Let's welcome Sportsnet's very own Basil Kamisa. What up? What up? What up? What's going on, everybody? Thank you for having me. I'm excited to do this with you, Ailish. And listen, Steve may be gone, but uh, the Leafs' presence is not. I got uh, my Felix Pot Van mask in the background because I figured I needed as much blue as possible to kind of give the people right. the feeling <laughs> of uh, Steve still being here. I had a Leafs uh, jacket that I was going to wear, but I was like, no, I'm not going to wear a jacket inside because why would anybody <laughs> do that right now? Well, you so, hosted hey, NBA chat room, so you know exactly the drill, right? Yes. Should I, should I go through it? Should I tell people what they should do? Yeah, tell people what they should do. <laughs> See if you can remember. Yeah. All right, this is NHL Chat Room, 6 p.m. Eastern time every Wednesday on Sportsnet's YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash sportsnet. If you're here right now, you should obviously just hit the subscribe button. And the purpose of the show is to be super interactive. We see you guys in the comments right now, and that is the entire premise of what we're trying to do here today. Interact with not only each other, but all of you guys as well. There'll be plenty of questions, plenty of things for you to chime in on. So please send in your thoughts, send in your comments, and... Um, Let's let's have some fun. This is. I a think show I just got guys. replaced on this show. It's going to be you and Steve moving forward. <laughs> Finally, all right. You just need to mention Jack Johnson like two to three times, and then it'll be very authentic that Steve's here. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. I feel like I'd have to yell a lot louder as well to make yeah. it authentic. Like your Steve energy level is quite low compared to Steve. <laughs> yeah, but I need you to stop comparing me to Steve. I don't even have right. the same. Water bottle as him or anything. I'm just, you know, I'm just myself, and we're gonna have fun. We're gonna be a little bit of a different show, but an effective show nonetheless, right? Right. Let's say hi Jack to our Johnson, viewers. Jack Johnson. In. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. You're good. You're good. Let's okay. tune in. Uh, we got George from Germany. Hello, and Maple from Japan. Welcome. Very exciting. International on this show phase. In case you didn't know. Yeah, I have someone in the Fans chat. From all over. My, my Manchester United kit, uh, which means they know what the hell that is, which is good, but. Uh, <laughs> Any chirps will get you blocked in the chat immediately. Let's let's get going here. Let's get going. Let's get going. So before we do start, we want to take a moment to recognize today's important date. It's November 11th, which is Remembrance Day. And so today and all days, we honor the brave Canadians who served and sacrificed for our freedom. It's a very special day, you know, worldwide, obviously, but especially here in Canada, as we remember the people that fought for our rights and our freedom um, throughout our deep history of Canada. So we want to take a moment to remember them. And as well, we want to remember Howie Meeker, who passed away on Sunday. And so if anyone wants to learn more about his incredible life, there is a wonderful sportsnet.ca article by Wayne Scanlon. Uh, remembering his career from a Canadian soldier to an NHL legend. So take a look at that. Um, it, you know, it is a pretty incredible story. He passed away this Sunday. So we've lost a lot of legends lately. And mm -hmm. this is a great recap kind of about his life. So head to sportsnet.ca and you can read all about it. Thank you. Now, Faze, you're a big Yo. NBA guy. So this first topic is a nice mesh of both of our worlds. So with the NBA confirming their return to play in a quick flurry of action this week, let's talk about how this might actually play a role in the NHL returning to play. So if you've not been following along, the NBA, NBA is coming back within this year. December 22nd is when they think they're going to have their regular season tipping off. So does that put a little bit of pressure on the NHL to follow suit? You know, I've been thinking about that for a while this week. You know, what does one league have to do with the other? And I really don't think there's a lot of external or internal pressure from the NHL to have to follow the NBA schedule. You know, respectfully, the fan bases don't overwhelmingly, you know, mesh in the Venn diagram. Um, it, it's a very different sport. It's a very different league. And I think each league has to do what's best for their players. I think one of the interesting things I heard from Elliot Friedman this week is the NHL players are so used to having their December Christmas break. It's like a staple of the NHL. I think it was something they fought to have over the course of the CBA. And if you were to start the season on the proposed date of January 1st, it would interfere with a little bit of that as well right now. And so, you know, the NBA is coming back on December 22nd, okay? The Lakers won the championship four weeks ago. They won the championship four weeks ago. And in three weeks' time, they're going to be back in training camp. I wonder what that has, the effect that has on the bodies of the players and the mental fatigue of the players as well. And I think 
whether it be a shorter season and coming back a little bit later with your players a lot more rested, uh, I feel like that has a greater impact on the game, no? Yeah, I think, and I looking at the chat, like a majority of people are saying it does put pressure on the NHL, and I think it's just because as fans, like, we don't want to see one league so far ahead of another and, and having that off season of just like waiting around. But if you, you did mention like four weeks ago, the Lakers won, like, like think about yeah. your body, the toll it's going on. You don't have an off yeah. season. What if you're a free agent and you're trying to look at where you're going to end up or you're going to negotiate a new contract like that is all put very tightly. The draft still has to come. They have free agency. It's a really good camp. point. It's yeah. crazy. Like I can't even imagine, like, I mean, I, didn't really make the playoffs much in college, but that break between the end of the season and like that mental reset as an athlete is really important. And to kind of like compress it, it could lead to injuries. It could lead to, you know, a little bit of unhappiness in a sense, but if the players are willing to play, then who are we to say, right? But fans obviously kind of want couple, them to be out yeah. there as soon as possible. <laughs> a couple things here. One, if you're going to chirp yourself, I think that gives me permission to trip you too. So that's great. That's good. That's to know, the whole show. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. Just making sure we're all on the same page here. Just making sure we're all on the same page here. And you mentioned uh, free agency and the draft with the NBA. Like, the draft is next week. Free agency starts next week. And then the week after that is basically training camp, right? It's, it's a lot to figure out in a short period of time. Now, the NHL is a step ahead of that, right? They've had their draft. They've essentially had free agency, although there are still some names out and about that could sign for some teams and make them a little bit stronger here and there. So, so the bulk of that part is generally done, right? Teams and players have kind of become acclimated with each other over the last couple of weeks after the signing, not on the ice, obviously, but certainly off the ice, certainly in terms of meeting management, et cetera, et cetera. So in terms of that, a step is done there, right? You really just need a training camp, maybe a, a preseason game or two, and, and you come back. And so whether it's January 1st or, or February, you know, it's not that far regardless, right? It's not that far away regardless. I would always err on the side of caution and make sure the players are as well rested as possible because uh, the, it, when it comes back, it's going to come back with a huge amount of fanfare because people are going to be so thirsty for it, obviously, right? So they will be. They will be, truly, like thirsty enough to, you know, have that countdown ready on their internal clock when the game is going to be back. So uh, if it means less people get injured and more players are, are physically able to play the game at the most optimal level – that's what you got to do for me. And if that means, as Elliot proposed, a 56-game season versus a 72-game season, all right, so be it. And for me, thinking about, like, rushing back into a season, that's one part of it. But the length of the season as well is going to be interesting because there might be, you know, hybrid bubble scenarios. There may be less travel. There's a lot that's up in the air, obviously, with the pandemic. But there's been, you know, Gary Bettman did mention the possibility of teams playing in their own arenas or playing yeah. in hubs, or in a hybrid system. So it seems well, that there's obviously need, a right? push. Yeah. Like, I would rather play at home, obviously, than play in a bubble. And, you know, the uh, the Athletic actually did a player poll where they asked the players if they'd be willing to play in a bubble and, uh, and, and how long they'd be willing to play in a bubble. And 32% said not play in a bubble at all, which is a pretty significant amount of players. Of course it is. That is significant. And think about, like, obviously, if you have a family and your family can be in the bubble, that's one thing. But if you can't ha see your family or maybe, you know, you don't have, like, kids in a, and, and, like, you're single, that's also something to consider as well. Like, you know, if you're living in a bubble, there's a lot of your life that's kind of halted. So think about that as a player. You know, you ha it's not just you're not just playing for our entertainment as fans. Like, this is your career. This is your life putting on hold in a sense. So I think minimizing the length of the season is important and also with the olympics maybe being in july or june and july you have to obviously have the stanley cup i think awarded before that just for rights yeah. and just for viewership right there's a lot of people in the chat right now going off on on this topic as well people saying they're okay with 48 to 52 game seasons that's from antonio uh mm -hmm. raider says a 60 game season people say they should be in conjunction to start after the world juniors because everybody loves watching that although i don't think the league is going to consider that <laughs> too, too intently, in my opinion, although it, it is a really good point because hockey will be on people's television, so they're not going to be entirely starved from that. I, I don't know. I don't really know what you do. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people also talking about the fact, and it's something that you said, there's still a pandemic going on, right? We don't know the, the specifics of where and when people can play, right? Will there be an all-Canadian division? We've heard rumors of that, but then they've been kind of quashed a little bit over the last week or so, and... Um, I, you know, look, there's obviously still a lot to figure out. There's a lot we don't know that people uh, in much more important places do. So we wait and see. Again, like I said, there's going to be an announcement when the league comes back 
relatively soon. It's going to elicit enough excitement that people will be like, you know what? That date, whether it's January 1st, obviously, or February or middle January, is not going to be too far away. It's going to be okay. You're going to get your hockey back, and you're going to get a playoffs that will be... Look, for all the talk about the last season bubble, which ended again like four days ago, uh, the playoff hockey was really, really competitive and really, really good. And that's what you want out of your sport, right? You want it to be competitive. You want it to be good. There's enough good teams, good players that given the right rest, they could lead to an entertaining season, be it shorter. So uh, I've been firm on that. Yeah, and that's, that's kind of where I'm at. If I were to predict, or what I think might be a good middle ground, is obviously I think 82 games would be too much. Kangaroo in the chat also do, agrees with me, Kangaroo. But I would say that for 60 games, I think that's a pretty safe buffer for a regular season. Think think about the fact that if you're trying to fit too many games in, that's when games can get canceled, whether you're traveling too much or you're injuring, the players are getting yeah. injured. But if you spread it out a little bit with 60 games, just kind of that middle area, I think the hockey would be better. Guys would be a little bit more rested. You're still going to have enough games to have a real regular season that you can determine like who's going to make the playoffs and which teams might want to trade at the trade deadline. You can't just jam that in in 40 days and, and not be able to really like understand your team but I think 60 would be kind of my happy place if I was thinking of where the NHL should come back and maybe like pitch an amount that the players would agree on but and then also think of mine I know who knows what's going to happen but 2021 22 you want that to be a pretty normal season that's in what I sense. mean that's what I mean right like you, you're trying to get as much out of the way this season so you can and the nba is doing the same thing right by starting in december having 72 games and making sure they're done before the olympics start so that that off season can be as normal as possible so you hope that in a year's time things pandemic wise are a little bit closer to being on the calm side versus the frantic side and, and you could have as much of a regular season as possible next question that the nba knows been mulling as well is what you do with fans and and they yeah. seem to be they seem to be insistent on wanting some sort of fans in the stadiums to watch those games, be it 25% or 20%. I'm wondering, revenue-wise, if it makes sense for the NHL to do the same. But again, one, one problem at a time, I'm sure, and, and that <laughs> will get dealt with in due course. Yeah, and we talked about this last week. Don't know if you were tuning in on the chat with uh, Steve and I, but we had our little wish list. And I said that I would be okay with virtual fans because obviously safety reasons, but I think the NBA did a really good job at incorporating these virtual fans in that rushed return during the middle of the summer. And I thought it was a pretty successful launch and I could see the NHL doing that if they can't have you know physical fans in the stands. I almost would prefer to have this virtual fan than you know a rink that's 10% we, full. Like we, we got a lot of cool different camera angles and television mm -hmm. viewing experiences enhanced because of the situation in the NHL. I thought that was a really big benefit uh, that came from them playing in bubbles the way that they did and without having fans in the stands, you have access to putting cameras in more places and making it a more TV uh, accessible product. I'm seeing a lot of people in the chat surprisingly level-headed saying, you know what, no wow. fans, we, we can watch from home. Listen, fans, listen, I'm not, that's not a knock on, on people in this chat, but People want to watch their sporting events, right? People want to watch sports and they want to watch it live. We've seen people jump at the opportunity to go watch baseball when they open things up for the playoffs and watch football at the certain stadiums that you can, be it college or professional. I imagine people will be uh, jumping on the opportunity to do the same in the NBA and the NHL, but at, at what cost is always what I think of, right? And I appreciate the, uh, I appreciate the, uh, like I said, the level-headedness going on in the chat right now. And Melvin says virtual fans. A couple others says virtual fans. I know people care about the owners needing to make money. I promise you they have enough of that, that it, it'll be okay. Be okay. <laughs> yeah, I think they'll, they'll be okay. But uh, in, in my mind, and it's the same thing with coming back later. It's the same thing with feeling icky about sports still in general is about the safety of everybody involved, be it the players, the staff, the people that have to work in buildings, the hotels, etc., uh, that's got to be priority number one. And then you could worry about trotting people in from the outside in to watch your games. So David in the chat said probably two or four divisions divided between America and Canada. And that whole idea of how are they going to maybe restructure this upcoming season in terms of teams playing against each other or limiting travel and obviously the border being an issue. <laughs> Currently it's closed. So we can have teams flying over and playing. Even the you know Toronto Blue Jays tried to get that 
permission from the government. They they weren't allocated that, so they had to move to Buffalo. There's rumors that the Toronto Raptors are going to play in the United States. So think about that. I think that Canadian hybrid division, we keep talking about it on the show, but it's obviously very intriguing. But maybe they could find a way to have the American divisions kind of structured geographically as well and limit yeah, that traveling. Yeah, it would make the most sense. It would make the most mm-hmm. sense for sure. Right. But, you know, that that's all stuff that still needs to be decided. And obviously we mentioned earlier, but Elliot Friedman's going to be all over that for us um, on Sportsnet.ca. So whenever these things happen, I know there's a, a board of directors or board of governors meeting on Thursday. So more information will be coming from that. Hopefully, well, that's tomorrow. So hopefully by next week, we have a lot more like concrete information for everybody. But at this point, you know, speculation and obviously the conversations are heating up, which is exciting because we just kind of want to know and we want to be. Yeah, we do. We, we, we really just want to know, on. right? Of course. Of course, <laughs> uh, of course. One thing I got to give you a shout out for, Goin in the chat said, Faisal with the clean fade jeez. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> Don't call me Faisal for nothing, right? Bro, like, like, they said, yo, Faisal, you got to host NHL chat room with uh, Alish. I said, okay, I'm going to get a fade then, right? Like, so <laughs> we're fresh. We're ready. The Only the highest of standards, apparently, in the time I've watched this show, right? Steve's coming right. through with his impeccable hair and you got the headband thing going on i gotta what does steve's in. hair even look like i can't not even sure. think of it not sure not sure to be honest with you goodness I, I don't, yeah no i don't know but thank you i appreciate that yes of course we want to boost your tires before we tear you apart which we have more exciting things to come but yeah we uh definitely want to know more so when the nhl gets a little bit more concrete information we'll bring it to you next week on nhl chat room But in the meantime, we're going to bring up something very fun that broke the internet this week. So if you've been living under a rock and haven't been on Twitter, you missed something just incredible. Uh, We're going to introduce the rating game inspired this week by none other than Wayne Gretzky. So this happened and I had to look at it quite a few times before I realized it was not a Photoshop. This is a real thing. Wayne Gretzky did an OVO collab and... I mean, I know you're a big OVO guy, but it just seems a little bit different with Wayne Gretzky. Like, look at him. <laughs> He's all smug with that. What does pose. different mean? Like, it's just like it came out of nowhere. That did is you, correct. That did is you correct. Know, did you know that Wayne Gretzky was an OVO man? Like, OVO man's, first of all, you got to add this at the end. Don't be ridiculous. I'm so sorry. But it came uh, out of nowhere. It just dropped, and we were all like, sorry, what? That's yeah, no, look, like I, I posted it a couple days ago on, on Twitter or whenever it came out. I guess it would have been Monday. And I'm still getting people like replying and quote tweeting and, and reacting to it because they're stunned, stunned by this development. And today, <laughs> OVO, OVO going a step further at Gretzky's place in L.A., filming a, a bit of a teaser video there, which makes me feel like in a weird way, there's going to be a collab. And okay. I, I don't know what that's going to be. I don't know. I don't know. You don't quote me on that. I don't have my OVO sources uh, AKA me DMing Drake didn't get back <laughs> to me right now. And so we're, we're waiting, but man, he looks yeah. fresh. He looks, he looks fresh. fresh. So we are going to show the chat, um, a, a segment of the rating game. FaZe and I have not seen these photos and we're going to be rating the great one on his all time best fits inspired by OVO. So welcome. Let's go. Uh, let's kick it off. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> Wait. Wow. Wayne, let's wow. go. Wow. That Where is do something. We start here. The necklace, the flow. The no, the, the hair. flow is the yeah. best. Yeah. This is like yeah. two weeks ago, they had Yammer Yager on the show. I don't know if you saw that. And that's a very Yager inspired flow, but just bleach blonde. We'll have to see if we can bring that back. I got to get him to my barber. I got to yeah. get him to my barber. I feel like he needs a fade. Um, how do we rate these? How do we rate um, these? Let's go. Uh, like last week, we had whiteboards but i forgot mine um you got oh, one handy goodness. yeah but okay. i'm not gonna do it so if you're not gonna do it i'm not gonna do it i, I can grab mine i can see it no, right it's all there. good it's all good all right. mine has to be I'm a rate gonna... and i got some okay, private so let's do uh one out of ten and yeah. i'm gonna give that like is ten good or is ten bad <laughs> it's no, hard let's to make rate. ten good let's make ten good but like is it a good fit or is it like it's a hilarious photo and it's like a 10 out of 10 you know i think you, i think you have the autonomy to Rate how you wish here. Okay, so I'm just gonna give him a good seven and a half because I'm just like unsure what's going on there. Cool. I'm gonna give him a nine point nine because man, to the confident the confidence you need to pull that off. And I'm if if possible, uh, Steph, if we can bring the picture back up, just because I'm not over the the fact that it's wild. Yeah, look, 
That takes it's a lot of nine point nine. No, it takes a lot of confidence. Stop thing. it! Stop it! Stop it! Does he have a bracelet on? Yo, that might be a ten. I don't know. It might be a ten. Might be a ten. I'm gonna give it a hey, nine point wow. nine. Wow! What 9. is the chat? Me. Please play along in the chat and obviously. Yo, the fake chat's is- got tens. Tens oh. all around. Amelia, ten out of ten. James, ten out of ten. Okay, Paul, well you can't just read the enough, ten. Enough. Jim oh, says play the guitarist for Def Leppard. <laughs> 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 That's good. All right, let's see uh, photo number two. Nine point nine for ninety nine. Michael oh, gets me. Oh, that sweat band though. I mean, it's not that great because he's just wearing a jersey, but it's the flow. Well, the flows, I feel like we have a theme the with the flow. It's exactly the same. Clearly, these flows are all spinning there. around at the same time. I'll give him a boost. Um, 7.8 because of the headband, but okay. like, it's still not doing it for me. Nah, that's a weird... My guy looks like he's about to work out. Like an <laughs> 80s promo video, like, you know? Yeah. It's like an 80s... Yeah, yeah. One, and two, and three, and four. Let's go! Okay, yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, like, okay, we're and like those shake weights that they have. He's definitely using one of those. Sure. Um, yeah, cool. Yeah. So, what'd you give him a seven point eight? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. I that's a bad one. It's a bad well, one. Well, you can give him a nine point nine again. I give him a nine point nine just to say consistent. But no, nah, okay. You know what? I'll give him a give him a six there. That's weak. Okay. Yeah, I didn't like it. Okay, I didn't like All it. All right. Let's move on. Oh, Wayne. 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 Woo-hoo, Wayne. This is something special. Oh, that shirt, like that pose, the look in his eye, like. I have that shirt. Oh. <laughs> um, this is wow. I What's didn't know he had it in him. Do you see that? Okay. You seem. You seem. Uh. Taking a back. <laughs> yeah, flush is the word I was actually gonna go with, but yeah. Um. Okay, that's an eight point five. Okay, stop. For me. Are yeah. you good? <laughs> I'm not good. Do you want to talk? No, no, no. We're good. But Wayne, okay, stop putting me on full screen, guys. <laughs> um. Here's the thing. I okay. Listen. It's like when we had Henrik Lundqvist photos up, and I, you guys surprised I, me, I, and I'm all listen. flushed. I'm not gonna say too much, but. I think if you Googled my name and went to images, there's a similar pose I have there. It, not Okay, relax. Um, and so I'm just going to give that a nine. It's just a nine? Seducing the world with the sweater, the eyes, the hair. It's the eyes. Whew. Okay, we got to move on here. Next one. <laughs> yeah, pull it up. I got to do a quick search to make sure that. Oh, my God. In. All right, here we go. Okay, this is too much. Where are his clothes? Okay. He's a young pup in this too. Look at the curly hair. He's a little scrawnier than I imagined. Um, I love the high socks. Yeah, this is a uh, this is something. This is trouble. Wayne Wayne had, Wayne had it back in the day. He's still a good looking, handsome guy. I'll be honest, you know. But young Wayne, nine point five. Lil Wayne? Um, I said Young Wayne. Oh, I know. Not Lil Wayne. Sorry, we don't acknowledge Lil Wayne anymore. Um, yeah, no. I'm, okay, what'd you, sorry, what'd you give this one? What'd you give this one? I said a 9.5. Pay attention. No, I know. I'm sorry. I was, just scrubbing. I was just scrubbing. Uh, are those the Terry Fox or Ryan? Yeah, the like, Terry Fox yeah. runners. Yeah, yeah. I have those here. Um, oh, somewhere. Well, I, don't, I don't know where. Uh, it's a 9.5. Well, actually, no. I'm rating his fit. His fit is short, so, so it can't be a 9.5. It's a, <laughs> it's a 7 because he's not wearing any clothes. But Wayne, that's slippery, man. Don't wear those shoes on the ice, bro. Those don't have grip. Those don't have grip, bro. Was it ice or was it concrete? Let's see. What I, actually, time. I don't know. I don't know. But he's got skates, so he's got skates yeah, there. Yeah, could just be for the. F- mm, it must be cold on his butt, eh? That looks like snow. He's gonna get frostbite, Wayne. I will uh, give this one a four. Yeah. Yeah. What a collection. I did not know any of these photos exist. Oh, <laughs> wow. 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 Okay. That is yeah. a look. Uh, first of all, the wedding dress, though. That is It's a lot. 80s. There's a lot going That's on there. That, I don't know the neck piece on that. It kind of like a turtleneck. Anyway, I shouldn't be judging her Wayne's outfit. has got a big I'm... thumb. What? Let's see look that again. I didn't see his thumb. Look at his thumb. 
It looks probably normal. Okay. Well, whatever. I don't know. Uh, nice little wedding fit. Nice little wedding yeah, fit. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's a nine. I'm a big fan probably of the tuxedo, an expensive to be tux. honest with you. I'm not a big tuxedo guy in but general. But you know Wayne Gretzky's going to have to pull out a tux for a wedding. He can't have like a... I, no, I know. I know. A casual know. wedding if you're Wayne Gretzky. He's probably at his winery. What's casual about a suit? Nothing. Anyways, that's it's Wayne tux, Gretzky. Though. You're right. I know that's a tux. I know that's a tux. Is that green or black? I don't know. Okay, anyways, black. it's nice. It's nice. Nine. I'll give that a nine. I'll give it a nine. I'll give it a nine. Okay, 9.2 It was my final option. What a weird decimal number. All right. Oh, so here we have two uh, wannabes Ooh, which, here. Who's who? The great one and, and Wayne Gretzky. What's yeah, going on? What's going on here? I think mm. that your jacket is pretty not close. <laughs> it's uh, way uh, off. What is things. that, like a one. trench coat? So is his. Um, no, his is like a nice dress coat. Okay, sorry, I don't have Wayne Gretzky money. My bad. Oh, look My at this bad. girl. <laughs> <laughs> that is so good. Come on. What do we see? Okay, yo, you guys in the chat, rate myself and rate Alish in yeah, the chat. You won. I definitely won. <laughs> A lot, cool me. OVO, a lot of tense for me. No! Come on, guys. Look how sweet my OVO sweater is. It's I've like brand new. You've never I've even seen that brand out yet. Like, it's like a new collection. <laughs> drop. Unreleased. Um, I have the exact... Okay, go back to mine. I have the same coat. My pants are way better color than yours. Obviously, the sweater doesn't really match, but it was... I was being creative, so I think I get bonus marks. And I, I have the I same forgot. smirk as Wayne. Look at the smirk. I think I win, the chat says. I think you win, too. Your background's even better. I wish you lit that a little better, but whatever. Well, I took it, like, at 5 o'clock today, and the sun was setting, and I had to, like, boost the brightness on my phone. Anyway, very excited that we could surprise you with that. I do actually really. have a, a similar jacket to that. Uh, it's just at work. And I didn't have it here. And again, it's about speed and efficiency when you do these things, right? So Monday, the picture dropped. And my first thought is like, A, how can I get that picture on a t-shirt so I could wear that? And I've been trying to source that. Haven't figured that out yet. B, how can I replicate the picture? Help you out, I'm sure. I hope so. How can I replicate the picture? So I had a similar-ish jacket, similar-ish plaid pants, similar-ish hoodie. Not even the OG OVO hoodie. It's the Canada flag that. one. And this was the background. The background that you guys see right now in chat room is the same background used in the now infamous picture of me uh, in the OVO sweater. And Congrats. I, thank you. And self-timer on a tripod. And here yeah, we I did self-timer too, but I don't have a tripod, so I had to stack up like six different contraptions and place and my phone up on books. It was pre-fade for me too. Pre-fade for me. All right. So. Well, thanks for everyone playing along for our ratings game. We Thank love you. that. Yeah, I think um, I we rated, love. I think we rated higher than you. Whatever, that's fine. We are all about playing games this week, but we have to spend some time honoring a Canadian legend who passed away on Sunday. Alex Trebek, longtime host of the beloved Jeopardy game, passed away on Sunday, and we're going to celebrate the life of him with our own version of NHL chat room Jeopardy in his honor. Thank you. This is him. Obviously, appeared on Sportsnet for the draft a couple that's weeks so cool. back. It was really amazing and, and glad that, you know, we got to do that. Um, yeah, so it was a tough week for uh, a lot of people that passed. And we want to make sure that we celebrate his life with our own NHL chat room, Jeopardy. And so Steph, our producer, has created an amazing, amazing game. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, oh. <laughs> you got, you got your name wrong or? Well, everybody spells my name wrong or calls me eyelash, so I, I kind of got confused and forgot which one I was going by, and yours is just a scribble. Well, that's cool. Your name, your name in my phone is eyelash. Yeah. Yeah. Great. FYI. That eyelash. Yeah. Okay, so what happened here is FaZe and I uh, are going to play two, one, one or two rounds of Jeopardy. We obviously don't have time to play the entire game. Uh, that would be really fun, but... Let's go through the categories and bring up the board here. All right. First category, Toronto hockey. Oh, boy. Where's Steve when you need him? Not here. Ooh, mm. second topic, women's, women's hockey. hockey. Hey, I'm ready for that one. Okay. Okay. 
so I guess I'll let you go first because you're new on the show and that's just polite to let your guests go first. So best uh, of luck. We have to keep our own score and in the chat, please play along. Please play along and if you can do the math for us because I'm not that great at counting. So no, nah, you you had it right. Please play a wrong because that is where I'm going to go <laughs> here right now. All right. Um, so I get to pick the, the the category and the question. Yes, isn't that how it works? Okay, I will go. Okay, uh, women's hockey for two hundred. Women's What's hockey, up? bold move. Whatever. <gasps> ding buzz 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 ding buzz buzz. The number of professional hockey goals Ailish Forfar has scored. You what buzz. Def define professional. Wow. What is Good. what is one? Correct. <laughs> Ooh, on the board. Oh, and of course we have it there for you. Plus yep. 200 for your boy. That was an easy one. Who wrote All these right. questions? Let's keep going. Oh, look at the Sally. Okay, I am going to go Toronto hockey for 200. Sorry, I thought I'd get to keep going because I got it right. Okay. No, we're alternating. And you have to read the question phase. Come on. I will, I will. Canada's most famous coffee shop is named after this former Maple Leafs player. Buzz, buzz, ding, ding, ding. We'll give it. We'll give a couple seconds for people in the chat. Ding, 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 ding. ding. Yeah, relax, relax, relax. What is Tim Hortons? I think it's who is Tim Hortons, but I'll give it to you. Plus 200. No. Respect. Respect, yeah. Yeah. You guys in the chat are getting it all wrong. These need to be answered in the format of a question. And y'all are just right. dropping answers in there. Well, they've never watched Jeopardy, and it's a disgrace. Okay, okay. you're up. So let's, let's move on. Women talkie for 400, please. Ooh, okay. Are you going to oh, read it? Manon Marone became the first player to play in the NHL when she suited up for this team. Buzz, 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 ding, 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 buzz. But I'll give it to give some time for the people in the chat. Okay. No, you're reading the chat. Uh, what is Tampa Bay? What is you the Tampa Bay? You are reading play? the chat. Nope. Basil Promise is cheating. you I'm not. Promise Producer you I'm not. Block his YouTube channel from the chat. Okay, they don't have. I don't app. even have the chat open right now. I've closed I, it. I I promise. I also don't have it open. I promise. I don't have it open. Why? All right. Whatever. He gets right. 400 points. Okay. Everybody knows that. Toronto hockey for 400, please. Hockey for 400, okay. <clears throat> Quiet answer. This Chicago enforcer scored the last NHL goal at Maple Leafs Garden. Ooh. Oh, um. Ooh. I don't, I don't think I know this one. Don't answer then, because you go minus 400 if you do. Uh, <laughs> uh, it just... It just timed out. I didn't know. Anyone in the yep. chat help me out? Alex got it right. Alex says, who is Bob Probert? Bob Probert is the answer. Hey, listen, I know you play for Ryerson, and th I said NHL goal because mm -hmm. that building had been transformed into not only a Loblaws, but uh, uh, yes. the Madame Athletic Center as well. Did you score in that building? I've scored many, many yeah, goals. Yeah, you have. Game. Yeah, you have. Yeah, you have. That's cool. But they only ever show the one pro goal at this show, so I'm going to have to send them a different highlight reel. Yeah, you do. All right, let's move on. Uh, I'll go women's hockey for 600, please. I'm up right now, 600 to 200. I'm aware, I know how to count. Okay. <gasps> oh! Daily double! Daily double. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta wager a certain amount, right? Uh, yes, you do. Uh, I have 600 to my name right now. I will throw down 400 of that 600 to uh, put into That's this question here. This many women have been inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame. Beep, beep, beep. No. What is a... Ugh. Beep, beep, beep. It's too uh, late, you're reading the chat. 18. No, I have, I wrote it down. I wrote it down. 18? Wrote it down. You think no, eight, 18? Eight. I said eight. Oh. Eight, eight. What is the answer? I don't know. I submitted it. Can I say what is not enough then? Like, oh, seven. Seven. Uh, yeah, not enough. Not enough would have been a suitable answer as well. Oh, AJ wrote that in the chat as I popped that back oh, over. Oh, AJ. He's right. He's right, by the way. 
Where'd you go, AJ? A hundred percent right. You're up. Now you're back at 200, right? We're tied. Yes, we're tied at 200. Okay. Uh, Toronto hockey for 600, please. Okay. Toronto hockey for 600. Answer. This goalie gave up Matt Sandin's 500th career goal. Oh my god, this this is. Mm. Now this is easy. Who dude. is Patrick Waugh? Oof, I would have just not answered. That is incorrect. I just guessed. I don't know. I know. That stinks. Who, who is it? Chad? It is Mika Kippersoff. You all remember it. 500th, shorthanded, slap shot. What a moment. What a okay, moment. No. Steps over the line. My favorite goal lie. ever. Okay. Well, we're like not that far off in age. So that now I'm negative? Four. You're negative 400, and I'm at oh, plus 200. Well, that's Garbage. No, you can you can make it up. You still have a, a chance to Perfect. make it up. You got eight and a thousand still Terrible. in there. I forgot uh, you lose marks for guessing. Yeah, I even tried to tell you. Let's go women's hockey for 800. Uh, There's no way you're getting these. This NCAA women's program has won the most national championships with six. Oh, it's not Dartmouth. Um, hey, <clears throat> put some respect on Dartmouth. Oh, I have, I, ooh. What is... Boston College. Oh, no way. The Just Minnesota Golden Gophers, buddy. All right. Minus six for me. Wow. Okay. And, that takes uh, us yeah, both. Yeah, quite a few. So we're both, at, uh, we're both at minus 400 right now. This is terrible. We're going to get kicked yeah. off. Okay. I'm going to go Toronto, ho or Toronto hockey for, what is it, 800 now? 800. Okay. Oh, goodness. <laughs> You ready? Okay, I can only wager. Uh, I have no money, so you I can, can just go up to a thousand regardless. You can go okay, up to a thousand. Gonna, I'm gonna wager six hundred then. Oh my god. Okay. <clears throat> I'm nervous. She had the primary assist on Ailish Forfar's only CWHL goal. Oh my god! Welcome I don't Kansas even know who, who this yeah. was. I did some research. Uh, I did some research. Oh, Ella Matushi. First of all, not in the format of a question. Second of all, wrong. No, wait, give me another one. Victoria okay, Paul. No, who is, from a slot shot from the point, Laura Fortino. Oh, Team Canada, too. I thought wow. you were this 100%. How many points did you wager there? Don't worry about it. Uh, not 600, enough. right? Okay, cool. So we're at minus not one. one. Okay. Was it more than a 600? No, no, it was minus 600. So now I'm at right. minus 1,000. This is cool. horrible. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, where okay. am I? 800? 800. Yeah. Women's well, hockey for 800. Is how you say yeah, it. Hockey for 800. Yes, sorry. Oh, we just did that. No, no, no. Oh, you're sorry, at sorry. That's my bad. But uh, what is the Minnesota Golden Gophers, no, bud? No, 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 no. no. Okay, yeah, I know. Okay, okay. 1,000, 1,000, 1,000. Sorry, that's my bad. That's my bad, Steph. Oh, yeah. Good luck. The CWHL's version of the Art Ross Trophy, awarded to the top scorer, is named after this Hockey Hall of Famer. Okay, so she's one of the Hockey Hall of Famers that we mentioned before, and the Art... Pardon? We just, we just mentioned the number. Yes, but you should know Art. some of them. Who is Mary Philippe Poulin? Mary Philippe Poulin is not in the Hockey Hall of Fame yet. What? Grace! I'm just throwing stuff out here, my bad. Um, it's called the Angela James Bowl. Hey, that's Put some cool. respect on Angela James. Uh, at least we're learning stuff here together. Yes, we are, and I'm trying to educate everybody about women's yeah, hockey. Yeah, we are. We are. Okay. We are. So if I win this, I'll be at zero dollars. Okay. So Toronto <laughs> sport or Toronto hockey for one thousand, please. <laughs> no. Yes. It's coming. It's coming. I promise. Very it's coming. Excited. Toronto I'm very hockey. nervous. This is all Toronto okay. All on this. He won the mm -hmm. Consmite the last time the Maple Leafs won the Stanley Cup. Oh, um, who is Wendell Clark? Okay, stop. Everybody stop for a second. We need to break this one down. I just need to stop it. You don't get to talk for a second. Maple Leafs last won the Stanley Cup in what year? You know this, right? Yeah, uh, 1967. <laughs> yeah, Did you think that he Wendell Clark didn't start playing I don't the know. won the Conn Smythe? I'm Eight aware, Basil. I got playing in. in his first year in the NHL. He would have been a small child, Wendell Clark. He wouldn't have been alive, actually. Also, if you didn't answer, you would have I, won the game. 
I don't care. Wait, oh, the answer is who is Dave Keon, by the way, yes. Okay. Thank you, thank you, chat. You're welcome. So, um, with a resounding score of minus 1400 to minus 2000, your winner. This is horrible. I don't think we have a final no jump. Do we? We don't, right? Oh, we should. I. We, we don't. That's it. That's it. Okay. Well, I'm so embarrassed for us and mostly for myself. But thanks for playing along, Chad. I'm sure this will live infamously. Embarrassed for the Hall of Fame only having seven women in there. I'm going to be very real with you right now. That that's not enough. That's not. Enough. Yeah, that's what we learn from this. Okay, more women in the Hockey Hall of Fame and more women's sports history, please. Um. Shout out Steph, our producer, for putting that all together. That was pretty cool. Thanks, and, Steph. And uh, just as real as it gets. And uh, rest in peace, Alex Trebek, who is a Canadian legend, a hockey fan in his own right, and uh, someone who will be revered in this country forever and ever and ever. We totally agree with you there. Um, in honor of Hockey Fights Cancer Month, actually, Faisal wanted to share some of his own personal story on the battle with the disease so we can help raise awareness. So, Faze, I know you wanted to share some stuff with our NHL chat room viewers. Yeah, well, first things first, um, Hockey Fights Cancer Month is something the league does extremely, extremely well. It is one of their, uh, certainly one of their top initiatives. And it's been around, I think, since I, I got Hold on one sec. I, I don't want to get this wrong. So uh, it's been around since 1998. It's raised over $28 million since its inception. Uh, last year alone, it was almost $4 million, $3.8 million. Uh, and listen, uh, we know that both hockey and cancer have played an important part in my life as well. Whether you know this or not, if you're watching, I was 16 when I was diagnosed with cancer. I was in the middle of playing hockey. I just wrapped up the hockey season for that year when, when that happened. Unfortunately, since then, I have not played another game of hockey i've been on the ice maybe two or three times since that now half my life ago but uh you know the league doing this uh always makes me feel a little closer to the league because of that you know they they do something so extremely well and uh when i was in the hospital at sick kids i remember matt sandine and alex ponikarovsky going there to visit and uh, my uncles ran into them in the elevator and made them come to my room and they took a picture with Matt Sandin and uh, we had to ask Alexei Ponikarovsky who he was because he was a rookie at the time and <laughs> Alexei Ponikarovsky and uh, there's the picture and uh, actually have a pretty cool moment from meeting Matt Sandin uh, a couple years ago as well and being able to bring up this cool moment guys if you have that it'd be it'd be pretty dope to play it this is from 2005 when i was in sick kids and i was a cancer patient there you came in that is alexei ponikarovsky yeah. next to you as well uh made my day as a 16 year old that this was there is, this as is me well. explaining to I Max. saw the impact that you had on other kids and families as well and i imagine it's memories like that and reactions like that hospital. is why you and other hockey players and athletes do things like this yeah that's awesome that's awesome it's pretty oh, cool. And, and, and Matt Sandin has his number raised in the rafters of Sick Kids because of all the generous work he had done at that place. And I'm very fortunate that I got to... He was, listen, Matt Sandin is my all-time favorite player. Uh, I did 100 school projects on him. My number at, uh, when I played was 13 because of him. And uh, it was really cool to see him do that. And then getting a chance to talk to him because of that was really, really cool as well. And it's a different Hockey Fights Cancer Month in the NHL because there's not any kind of initiative in the rinks right now because there are no rinks right now, as we talked about. But uh, they're still doing a lot, a lot of good work. And uh, you can head to cancer.ca slash hockey fights cancer to, to learn a lot more about this and, and their initiatives and uh, maybe give a little bit as well to, to an unbelievable, unbelievable cause. Oh, wonderful. Well, thanks for sharing that with us, Faze. Mm. And on that note, our boy Steve is still taking donations for his Easter Seals Ontario um, auction. So you can still bid on his cool jerseys um, and raise money for another great cause. And if you're looking for any of this information, you can head to Steve's Twitter page and that's where it will all be. So all good things happening here and Hockey Fights Cancer Month. And we're trying to find ways for everyone to support um, as we can throughout the pandemic. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, so how, that's how, all how, we how, have, how'd though. How'd I do? Wait, hold on, hold on. How'd I do? How'd I do today? I thought you did all right. Um, yeah, I think you'd definitely be what welcome back on the show. We'll have to see with the producer. Oh, no, they said you're never allowed back after you embarrassed me on NHL Chatroom Jeopardy. Okay, uh, so. 
That's it. Hold on. You embarrass yourself. I like. No, I, it was just a lot yourself. of pressure, <laughs> and I was nervous. So. I yeah. Know. No. Is, is that why you only scored one goal? Like the pressure and the nerves as well? Oh that... my God. Okay. Yeah. You? Get out of here. Play. I can pull out the VHSs of my goals too and, and upload cool. them. More than one. It's more than this one. This is just NHL chat room rips on Ailish week after week after week after week, and just I'm just loving it. I love it so much. <laughs> Everybody in the chat, say something nice about Ailish before no, we leave. No, don't. Say something don't nice think. about Ailish because not only uh, is she tremendous at her job, she was a tremendous hockey player, far better than I or probably all of you Thank will you ever have been as well. So uh, this so is what nice. they're my ear. Hold on. Sorry, I missed that part, guys. <laughs> Shut no, up. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. Well, no, you did a great job, and we appreciate you stepping in for Steve this week, but he will be back next week. Thank God. <laughs> uh, in the meantime... If you're here watching the show, I'm gonna please subscribe. Hit the subscribe. Okay, hit the subscribe button. So, I had to get one in there because if not, what's the point of my uh, job here? Uh, 6 p.m. Eastern time every Wednesday. It'll be far better next week when Stephen Ailish are back uh, doing what they do so well. I appreciate you guys letting me hold it down for a little bit uh, for this week, and uh, yeah, maybe who knows? Maybe I'll pop in another time and have some fun with you guys as well. Maybe both of you. You're always and, welcome. Yeah. Wow, thank you. That's. Not what you're gonna say. I said all day. (laughs) All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next week.